Hello, and welcome to Glory Be. Interesting people and how they pray. Each week, we chat with interesting people about their lives, their work, and how they pray. I'm Sharon Hanish. And I'm Mike Malcolm. Our guest today is Mr. Garrett Schilling. Garrett is a middle school science teacher, a Calvary Scout for the Oklahoma National Guard, and the newly hired youth minister here at the Church of St. Mary in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Garrett grew up in an Army family and at age 16 moved to Tulsa. He was baptized Catholic, raised Protestant, and rejoined the Catholic Church in February of this year. He holds a Bachelor of Science in Parks and Recreation Management and a Master's of Effective Teaching and is working on his Master's in School Administration. This summer, Garrett will attend the training with the Oklahoma National Guard, get married, and co-direct the Diocesan Youth Summer Camp. Then he'll officially start as the Youth Minister here at St. Mary on August 1st. You've got a summer ahead of you. Uh, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and funny connection. So my kids went to school at the middle school where you teach right, in Broken right. Arrow, but they are old, so they left before you got there. <laughs> but uh, they have very many fond memories about walking through those halls. It's a good school. It's a big school. It's a very big school, yes. Yeah. I mean, compared to where you sent your kids at the school of St. Mary, there's about mm-hmm. 30 kids who graduate and... Uh, eighth six? grade today, the eighth grade this year was 300. Yeah. Somewhere in there. Yeah. So it's just under a thousand for the population of the school. Yeah. I think we have like 860 or something. Yeah. Like that. Did That's you cool. always want to be a teacher? Like, so you're a teacher, you're a <laughs> high school science, I mean, a middle school science teacher. Right. I think of middle school as a difficult age, but if you're called to that, so right. I mean, how did you end up being a teacher? Uh, so as a kid, you know, my dad was in the army. So like any, you know, kid who watches his dad do that i grew up wanting to be in the army uh but just as time went on um my father made it very clear he did 20 years and that i was to go to college it was very very straightforward uh so i did that um originally my degree was in environmental conservation and uh just you know you stare at a dandelion long enough you figure out maybe you don't want to do that so uh, i went with parks and rec because i'd been a mountain guide a boy scout things like that for so long um, and then just, I think sophomore year or something like that started popping in my head that maybe I wanted to teach. Uh, I had always kind of like taught in some capacity with the different summer camps I had worked at. And, um, then after college, just kind of, I mean, no better way to put it. I was just kind of a vagabond just all over the country working for different camps. Yeah. And eventually it was just like, you know, you get sick of, you have kids for a week, you teach them, you get to know them and then they're gone. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, you know getting older can't do this forever like how do you do that and teaching was just kind of a natural step past that I actually didn't want to be a science teacher to just start with I wanted to be a history teacher but my science my you know, bachelor's yeah. in science and they were like hey, you know a science teacher is probably gonna get you more jobs than anybody can teach history oh. so <laughs> yeah that's why I ended up kind of in the middle school is just kind of a fluke originally I was gonna be an elementary school teacher but mm-hmm. uh the little guys tend to they're just kind of like, I don't know about this guy. Yeah. <laughs> so middle schoolers are, are a little different. Well, and everything is new for them, too. They're exploring everything, want to get into everything. And eighth grade is a really interesting year because they are they want to be so grown up. But right. at the same time, it doesn't take much to get them back to playing in the mud with sticks. Mm-hmm. It's a good time. Yeah. And you're going to be the diocesan summer camp co like associate director okay i think so. is the official uh moniker for it and is that who will you be is that middle school high school like uh it's the youth ages uh i do think it runs we so there's a few different weeks there's like a junior camp mm-hmm. i think that's fourth to sixth grade um and it's only half a week and then you've got your typical like middle school to probably like juniors and then you have a. Uh, like a youth service week, which I am pretty sure is mainly junior seniors. Oh, that's a good idea. A youth service week. Mm -hmm. So the kids will show up. uh, We'll, you know, of course we'll have mass, we'll have prayer, but rather than being at camp all day, we'll make lunch, load up in, uh, not trucks, (laughs) load up in vans and then come into the city and do a different service project every day. Okay. Where is camp? Uh, Sequoia state park is, is the main site. Yep. So it's an overnight. Mm -hmm. Like they, Sure it's is. a real go sleep in a it cabin. It is a sleepaway camp, yes. Yeah. And will you be, like, what will you be doing? Facilitating all these 
sessions or will you be cooking or will you be me doing personally yeah you a personally. little bit of everything probably uh usually as associate director at most camps you just kind of like uh you just plug up problems right you got to deal with kids who are having a hard time mm -hmm. uh somebody got to go deal with something and something needs to be made or a group needs to be watched or somebody just needs time to go take a shower you know so it's a little bit of everything Great, the life of a teacher during the summer. So you don't really get your summer off. So it's like you're, you're going to go to the next two weeks. What What do you do? So you're you're in the Army National Guard, mm -hmm. right? So what will you do during those two weeks? Um, <laughs> a lot of different things. Um, last so like last year was a was a longer training period. We were gone for six weeks. Uh, we went to California in the desert and took pl took part in like a real world like a uh, scenario of like kind of like fighting in a desert kind of thing. Uh, this year it'll be a little easier. It's only the two to two weeks. So it's, we're going to go up to Fort Riley in Kansas yeah. and you know, be out, be out in the field for 12 days and that kind of thing. Do you enjoy like the outdoors? I know you've mentioned like you're very involved in <laughs> scout. I mean, you were involved in scouts and now, you, you know, basic training and also like summer camps and <laughs> Uh, I do, yeah. Um, my grandfather once uh, told me, he's like, you know, mijo, not everybody wants to be miserable like you. Um, that's <laughs> right. I, I, being a, being a man who grew up in Mexico, that's the way yeah. he looks at it. Uh, I have always enjoyed that being mm. outside. Started with scouts, kind of went up from there, mm. and just you know, as a mountain guide, basic training, being in the field was like the best part of it. And I do enjoy when we're out, and I don't know, I just I like it. Yeah. Oh, I uh, I don't like bugs, so, you know. <laughs> yeah. Do you get used to the smell of bug spray? Uh, sure. I don't use or bug do you, spray, really. You don't get it? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. No. Does the military not allow it under no, certain no, they circumstances? Do. They, yeah. they do. Well, under certain circumstances, you probably wouldn't want to use it. Okay. But when we're in the field, yes. Yeah. Um, our uniforms actually have, uh, like, bug spray, like, built into built it. In? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Last, like, 300 washes or something huh. like that. I'd buy a couple shirts of that. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's pretty cool. Okay, yeah. so your summer's busy, mm -hmm. and you mentioned, I mean, one of the things that's interesting people and in how they pray, our podcast, um, we mentioned in, in the bio that you were baptized Catholic, mm -hmm. but you really grew up Protestant, mm -hmm. and you're a convert. So, you know, before you converted, were you a religious person growing up? You know, yes. Did you, okay, talk about, tell us about your faith journey. Sure. Um, so, uh, I was baptized Catholic. My mother was raised Catholic. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I was baptized in my grandparents' church in Livermore, California. And uh, grew up going to St. Michael's my entire life. Whenever we were there, that's always where we went. And um, when we were, you know, back back home, whatever base we were living at, uh, my parents were Protestant and it was usually Southern Baptist. Uh, so we went there for a long time. Uh, when we moved to Lawton, went to Cameron Baptist down there. And then when we moved here, uh, I was older and kind of starting to, like, you know, get ready for college and had had a job and kind of things like that. Uh, so kind of that path took more of, like, conversations with my parents rather than regularly attending a church. Mm -hmm. um, but they, my family got really involved at Battle Creek. Yeah. And so they were there for a long time. And, um, then as I went through college, uh, of course, every time I was with my grandparents, I was going to mass, good old St. Michael's. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, uh, just kind of had my own Bible, had my own journal, kind of doing my own, kind of doing my own thing, doing it as best as I could as I was like moving around and going to all the different schools and things like that. And then, uh, eventually as in this past year, you know, I had, I had moved home, gone to basic and was trying to find a church to start to go to. And just was regularly kind of ending up at mass at whenever I didn't know what church I wanted to go check out because I always knew, you know, you, you know, what's going to happen. Uh, right. you know, that was always something my grandfather would tell me. It was like, he's like, you know, you can at least always rely that like, even mm -hmm. if it's in another language, mm -hmm. you know, what's happening. Yeah. You know, so, um, just, and then I met Hannah. And uh, there was a lot of discernment, a lot of time spent mm -hmm. with, do I convert, and am I converting for my own walk with God, or am I converting just, you know, because my in-laws really want mm -hmm. me to, and there's a whole lot there, right? Yeah. And so, eventually, um, I had told them, you know, I'm not going to convert just because you asked me to, it wouldn't be right, that has nothing to do with my, my walk with God, that has to do with making you happy, mm -hmm. um, which... I want my in-laws yes. to be happy. Yeah, of course. <laughs> like, yes. I don't want to record that. But, yeah. um, but there has to be something bigger. There has to yeah. be some reason, Even right? More. And just praying about that, um, 
and kind of like, is, is that, am I just doing that to appease somebody? And mm-hmm. then eventually I got COVID and was in the hospital doing a lot of prayer and just kind of pop, kept popping in my mind of why am I not doing this? You know, mm-hmm. this is obvious. This is where I keep going back to is, mm-hmm. is the Catholic church. And, you know, why am I not just coming into full communion rather than just sticking out? Cause you know, whatever the reason I had. Well, welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I know that's, I'm, that's a, a, just kind of a powerful story about you finally had time in the hospital, <laughs> you know, to be quiet right. and listen to the voice of God without mm. the voices of people. And then you discern right. back, back into the church. So I love that story. And now, you know, we're so excited because you're going to join the staff of St. Mary's as our youth yes. minister. Um, or our youth director, or whatever our the official title is. Something with youth. I uh, know, something with <laughs> yeah. youth. Obviously, you have a heart for youth and have a lot of experience with youth. So talk about, like, why did this position interest you? You know, when we approached you, you were just, you immediately were so, you didn't even know me, you know, and you were excited. You immediately emailed back, yes, I'd love to talk to you about it. And right. and so talk about why that excites you and also some, you know, kind of exciting plans you might have right, for right. youth ministry this upcoming year um yeah so i was approached about the position uh by somebody else who was coming on to staff uh, and just saying like they had had a meeting talking about the the lack of a youth minister at the moment and that the church was starting to be open and she had kind of like i had come to mind and um she just reached out she actually reached out to hannah because she had hannah's phone number and um i was like yeah sure like give them my information uh like, I don't know if I'm the best person for the job. I don't know if I would be the one that they want, but we can see where it goes. And obviously, you know, it worked out. Um, just, I don't know. I've lived most of my life just kind of assuming that there will be things put in my path and, you know, you're going to feel right about it or it's not going to feel like the right decision. Mm-hmm. And I've always interpreted that as like God guiding me. You mm-hmm. know, um, you make a decision, you feel sick to your stomach. It's obviously not the right one, which... I've made plenty of those <laughs> and yes. you make a decision. It feels good. Yeah. Okay, cool. Like that's probably, it's probably the best. So of course there's prayer involved and things like that, but eventually minus a burning bush in the backyard, you know, you got to kind of go with that feeling. So, um, yeah, just excited to come. Uh, Hannah and I are very excited to be at St. Mary's. This was the parish we had decided to be parishioners at when she moved up here, which took a long time to find the church. And, um, you know, of course, like we're planning on having a family and we would love when they become, when our children become like youth aged, to have a good, like flourishing youth pro- program, um, rather than, you know, just trying to start from that volunteer aspect. If I right. have the opportunity to help build it, I might as well. And Hannah's kind of under that same understanding. So, uh, yeah, on the books so far, we've got our barbecue and field day to celebrate the start of school, mm-hmm. uh, which is going to be on August seventh after uh, seven. Not 7, it's going to start at 7 Mm -hmm. Uh, p.m. It's going to start at 7 p.m. after evening mass. And there will be a lot of things going on there, some prizes for families to win, which is always Mm -hmm. fun, right? And then uh, two weeks later, we will have a pancake breakfast where Hannah and I will be there. So after each morning mass so that people can come meet us and ask questions and have pancakes, which is always like the best part about that. That's right. (laughs) That's great. So all these things are happening, and then simultaneous with that, you're still pursuing another master's degree yes <laughs> we've, inter- we've interviewed a couple jesuits and you've got as many degrees as some of the jesuits uh, do yeah, right. i have a lot of really random training yeah, yeah. my kids in boston used to play yeah. like has mr s had this job before mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. and the answer was usually yes, yes in some capacity <laughs> right um but yeah another master's yeah. uh just my first one in effective teaching is accepted like all throughout new england where i started yeah. to teach Moved back to Oklahoma, and the the state school board, not the school boards locally, state was like, "Well, like it's cool, but we're not going to pay you for it." So, oh. uh, and to be a principal in the state of Oklahoma, you have to have that principal certification. Right. So, right, um, just kind of administration. It's just one of those things, you know. You have a family, right? You can't. Hannah's probably going to stay home with them. Yeah. So we got to, you know, there's sneakers yep. to buy and formula to have yep. and things like. Gotta that. Got to have a plan, right? Yeah. Right. So just working on that. Yep. Well, that is great. Well. This gives us a great introduction to who you are as a person. And again, if you want to meet Garrett, if you're in Tulsa, for our local listeners, uh, come on over August 7th and August 21st. So it'll be on the the church website. But we're also curious about how you pray. Because that's something that we we just don't often talk about. You know, like, Mm -hmm. hi, I'm Mike, and I like to pray the... 
right, the office. Right, oh, okay. Right. We just don't introduce ourselves that way. And sometimes how we pray is something that's so intimate that we only share it with just a few people. Right. But in general, <laughs> um, we're, we're definitely interested in how you pray. So how has your prayer life changed you, as you've arced from being a, a little baptized Catholic to you know drifting through a few um, Protestant churches, those expressions of right. the faith, and then finally coming back to the Catholic Church. Right. Um, it has drifting is a is a good way to put yeah. it. You know, and uh, I don't mean that in a bad way. No, it's yeah. it's not it's not yeah. necessarily a bad thing because uh, at different points in your life you're going to pray mm-hmm. differently, right? Mm-hmm. And you'll circle back and mm-hmm. go around. And uh, drifting isn't you know yeah. you're just going you got to yeah. meet where you are, right? Yeah. So uh, when I was younger, especially like when I was a mountain guide, very active yeah. praying of. Um, uh, I know I could just remember times when I mean, which is very cliche, but like summoning a mountain yeah. and being up there by myself and uh, just actively like sitting and yeah. praying and observing and listening and being in what God created. Like I remember, I have like this really. It's a kind of embarrassing, like as an adult, mm-hmm. but like you know, twenty two years old, like watching like the sunrise and everything, yeah. and like I just like I wrote down this thing where like I was like like this is God's church, right? Yeah. Like we build cathedrals, we have stained yeah. glass, and like. Yeah. God created this place with mm-hmm. like towering trees and mm-hmm. mountains and birds and all this stuff. So that was always very, that was very formative for me to realize and kind of really hammer home like that concept of like God is alive. Yeah. Um, I was raised always with my mother saying like, you know, God is in your life. God is alive. Like mm-hmm. we're here because your grandfather like came from Mexico and like yeah. if, if it wasn't for God, we would have never got this far. And yeah. you know, your father's still around even though he's been in the army for so long because like God is involved in our lives. And, but as like an adult, coming into like adulthood like that was being in the woods was very uh powerful for yeah. me um i've had times in my life where you know there's there are very um what's the word like powerful like you mm-hmm. just feel like you need to pray uh about like something that's going on especially in those tough times in life and then there's times when things are going pretty well you feel like you kind of got a little in control and that's when i find that um prayer needs to be more uh, I would almost say like regimented, like, mm-hmm. you know, I'm going to take 15 minutes of prayer. I'm going to, I'm going to sit, I'm going to meditate. I'm going to pray. I'm going to write. Um, usually, honestly, when I pray, I do a lot of writing because uh, my mind will wander yeah. and I don't like it when it does that. So um, I might start off with some meditation mm-hmm. and then go into writing. Uh, I find that like the Jesuit examine is mm-hmm. very, very, I like that mm-hmm. a lot mm-hmm. um, just because those guidelines are very helpful. Yeah. Me too. So when you write, do you like write a letter, dear God, or do you just sort of write what is rising, what you hear God saying? Or yeah, I I don't know if anybody. We've had lots of guests. I don't know. Is this number eighty or something? Yeah. But I don't know if anyone has mentioned journaling, which I too, throughout my life, have found very helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, So when you write, what what do you what do you write? Uh, it depends. I am not the world's greatest journaler, even though I've always tried to be. Um, I have countless started ones mm-hmm. with like, you know, plenty of pages left. <laughs> yeah. Yes, um, yeah. but sometimes it is just like a letter to God. Um, sometimes it's just like the straight examine formula mm-hmm. and, um, it just depends on what I'm going through with that day yeah. on how I feel driven. Uh, usually on the days where, I'm, you know, I'm more tired and it's taking a little more work to get in that frame of mind. It's much more like a, like a worksheet, like that, that exam and format. And then on the days where, uh, like something is on my mind, it's a little more like writing a letter to a family member. Mm. So let's, you know, for people who aren't familiar with the exam and which I also love and has been mentioned, mm-hmm. it's interesting to think about writing that, you know, uh, but if we could put a link in the bio to certainly how to do the yep. exam and that it'll be in the show notes. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, so we know it sounds like, you know, I, I love the sitting in God's cathedral. I mm-hmm. love, I don't know how many people, have, I know the bishop talked about mm-hmm. nature because our bishop, right. you know, he has a, uh, oh, what's it called? A, a he calls it his little hermitage. It is but a it's, little it's a tiny shack <laughs> that's yeah. out in the middle of nowhere. Right. I've, I've heard. I've yeah. heard of this. The, the yeah. shack. Yes. <laughs> and he, no one knows where it is. I know. But he has referenced that too. Right. Um, but so sitting in nature, they examine. Um, but I also there are times in your life when prayer can be difficult. Mm-hmm. Has there been a time in your life that you can think of where where it's been difficult to pray? Honestly. The most difficulty I've ever had with prayer is when things are going really well. Uh, I 
I feel like that's kind of counter to what a lot of people say, but when things are going well, uh, and just like, there's a little more confidence. Like I kind of think, I think I got this. Like, mm-hmm. I think I kind of figured out how life's going to go. Mind you, I'm only 32. So like, then I mess it up or like taxes come up and I screw up. But, <laughs> uh, I usually find it a little harder than, you know, life is busy. I got to go to, from the school to, oh, something, go pick something up for my sister, drop something off for my mom, take the dogs out for a mm-hmm. walk, go to the gym, make sure I'm eating right, make sure you're yeah. drinking right. And, you know, you get to the end of the day and pray over a meal. And then, you know, like I'm going to pray right before bed. And next thing I know, it's the next morning. Mm. Yeah. And, but when things hit that all stop, you know, like something crazy mm-hmm. happens. Uh, for me, there's been a few like big ones and that's, when I find it the easiest to pray, mm-hmm. um, which has always been reassuring to me that like when everything goes and nothing is working, that like I fall back on going to church more mm-hmm. and praying more, um, which, you know, I would like those to actually yeah. stay strong right. when things are bad, but, right. you know, stay strong also when things are good. Um, but yeah, it's hardest when things are just, you know, life is cruising along and you feel like you kind of got it. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I think that that's the, the, um, the good thing about, like you mentioned, the the routine of mass or d- d- praying every day, whether we want to or not, um, at least we're doing the practice of it when things are going well. Because I too find that when things aren't going well, it's God's way of calling me back. You know, right, then right. you really depend on God. And kind of like an ego check is what yeah. I've always thought yeah. of it as. Yeah, there you go. But when things are going good, you can kind of just fall out of the habit, forget to turn toward God. Mm-hmm. That's a, It's always helpful for me, gratitude during those times, making a gratitude list, or, um, yeah, which is part of the examine, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, so, yeah. Yeah, my frequency doesn't change, but my fervency does. Well, that's mm-hmm. a good way so to that's say That's a good it. way to put I'll it. I'll pray often, but, you know, oh, thanks, God. It's you know? right. <laughs> right, right. And uh, that's a little different than, you know, prayer. I remember when the world was shutting down back in early 2020. There was a lot of fervent prayer, I think, offered. But, yes. uh, you know, I hope it continues today as we're mm-hmm. easing out of this, hopefully. And I know. And, and I'm thinking, too, of uh, with the school shootings as Mm -hmm. as i thought of all teachers and all people and that community in uvalde you know when things like that happen it it, i pray quick you know i'm (laughs) uh so yeah there's always something in the news i guess these days to be praying for so we talked about some long prayer where you can really sit down and focus Mm -hmm. and then do you have any go-to prayers this you've got two minutes Uh, do you have any favorites Honestly, the quickest prayers that I say are usually seconds. It's not okay. minutes. Yeah. Um, and it's just asking that, like, God's will be done, mm-hmm. you know. Or, at like, I feel like I apologize a lot to mm-hmm. God about yeah. the fact, like, I hope what I'm doing is your will. Yeah. I hope I'm not fighting your will. Yeah. Um, just kind of asking for, like, a peace and ease, a clear path forward mm-hmm. with whatever I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and... Uh, honestly, to be honest, like, because I come from that Protestant background, uh, the prayers are more conversations than yeah. like set regimented ones, like a, a Hail Mary or something mm-hmm. like that. I do know how to say Hail yeah. Marys. <laughs> um, my grandmother made sure I knew how to pray a rosary right. and things like that, yeah. but um, uh, I still have to use the card yeah. at the moment, so yeah. we're figuring that out. But yeah. just asking that God's will right. be done because, right. uh, you know, a lot of the times we can, you know, almost like just if you're scared of something. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to mm-hmm. think like Jonah, right? Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. And you just want that will to be done no matter what it is. Which that's great for youth, you know, keep mm-hmm. it simple. Yeah. Teach them how to, you know, turn toward God. Right. And to turn their life over to God and to. I was always taught that there are very few wrong answers or right. ways to pray. Like there are ways that help you to get into that mindset. Mm-hmm. Our set prayers, our mm-hmm. Hail Marys, yeah. our rosaries, our, our get you into that mindset. Right. But if you don't put your own intention in there, okay, cool. We're just saying words at that point, right? right? We need to go further with that. And with youth, it is important for them to understand, like, it's okay to just, like, ask God and pray to God about, talk to God, right? A mm-hmm. conversation with someone who's there. Yeah. Not not somebody who's, like, you know, he's going to get to that when he's through with, like, all the other mm-hmm. prayers he's got to read. Well, I've always heard that the only bad prayer is no prayer. Exactly. Yeah, the one so, you didn't say. The one you didn't say. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's fun to pray with 
large groups of people. I, I'm, I've never been to a World Youth Day. You uh, know, I've heard of it. It's uh, it sounds like a trip. <laughs> I have a, a friend who con celebrated. He's a priest uh, mm-hmm. from the the Tulsa area. He con celebrated the mass. I think in Philadelphia, and I think that may have been Pope Francis who was there. And he was so far away, he, you know, held the ciborium, and uh, Pope Francis consecrated it, although my friend the priest never actually got to see the Pope. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So he distributed communion. You know, it was mass, of course, but he just heard and couldn't see because there was so many people. But So that's a great way to pray, um, even if unusual. It's great to pray with a small group, with a handful, with your spouse. That's certainly a different That's way to pray. Yeah. And then praying by yourself. If you could ask any of those groups, or maybe all of them together, mm-hmm. to join you in a single prayer intention, what would that be? I'd just go back to the having God's will be done. You know, okay. um, I think that, like you said, when horrible things happen, like the like shootings, or we we have all that kind of thing. We, we're people. We don't yeah. see that. We don't see that long thing, that long game. We're never going to know it. Um, we need to just trust that God's will is the best, you know, and he has our best intention in mind. Uh, so that's always what I would say people need to pray for the most. Well, would you lead us in a glory be? We'll join you for that prayer intention. God's will be done. <laughs> um, or we can all pray, pray to together. Me. How about we all pray together? Let's all pray together. Yep, let's do that. <laughs> Sorry. So in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Well, thank you so much, Garrett, for being part of the parish, and welcome. Yes, thank you. So and for being part of this podcast. So, know, thank you so much. Yep. Glory B is a production of the Office of Communications at the Church of St. Mary in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm your producer, Mike Malcolm. See you next time.